How's it going? <laughs> the closest thing I have to hit is this tree. So, as you can see, we got like eight inches of snow. Yay. I'm so sick of winter. But either way, we've got about a five day break in snow, so I'm gonna try and finish this thing in the time we got. Fingers crossed. Now, framing's just about done. It's time to start working on the siding. And I found quite the score, siding wise. Would you look at that? Perfect pieces of siding. I've got footage of what these came from. I'll, I'll put that in right now. Guys. The mother load. I came down this industrial road just on a whim and there was a guy working here and I asked him if I could take some pallets and he brought me to these behemoths. So, luckiest day ever. I'm gonna have fun loading these up. Quite the score. So I didn't get any footage of me breaking these down cause you know, boring. But I got these one buys which will make for some great siding. I've got these doubled up short two by fours and I've got a bunch of long two by fours out of them and a couple two by threes. This is obviously siding and trim. These, I'm not sure. I'm just gonna leave them for now and see if I find a place. If I don't find a place for them, I'm just gonna use them to stiffen up the framing. So let's start on the siding. And it seems I found myself in one of those wonderful moments where my hoarding pays off. I'll show you what I mean. I accidentally left these out on the driveway before the last storm when I was cleaning up the side of the house. I say accidentally, I mean they're heavy and I didn't want to move them. So I only know where they are because I hit them with the plow, but look at that! I've had this corrugated sitting on the side of the house for like three years and it finally has a purpose. We're going to use it as a Wayne's coat for the shed. It'll look nice and save us some siding. So I'm just going to get these pieces installed and then I'll trim it all up all at once. And guys, I finally did it. I've wanted one of these collated screw guns for so long, but never had an excuse to get one because, you know, I'm a landscaper and a welder, not a carpenter or a drywaller. But this was my excuse and I'm freaking stoked. Now we're about to find out if these screws can pierce metal and if they can, this is my favorite purchase of the year already. Oh my god! They can! This is a miracle tool, I love it! So I got a bit of a framing problem here. This is the only shot I can get of this side of the shed because I put all the snow right here. <laughs> Apologies, but I've gotten my pieces cut and I'm gonna start hanging the siding. And yeah, I'm doing this without any sheeting or underlayment. This shed doesn't have to be perfect, guys. It just has to look decent and keep stuff out of the weather. So, the way I'm gonna install this is like some sort of pseudo shiplap. I'm gonna overlap as little as possible and then anchor it as close to the top as possible. Then I can make sure everything's level. And then rinse and repeat all the way up. So that way all the screws are getting covered by the piece above it. And we got kind of a nice shiplap looking look. That split's not ideal though, is it? It's okay. So I've run out of those nice long pieces besides a couple that I'm saving to do trim because I think that's important to look good. So on this back side, I'm just using the scraps we got left and then I'm gonna have to go find more pallets. Hopefully we get lucky and we can find some more of these monstrously huge pallets, but we'll see. The guy said that he gets his shipments of aluminum on those pallets, so maybe I'll check with like, you know, river supply companies, people who would use a lot of aluminum. Fingies cross. Fence pickets! We don't gotta talk about where I found these. Wow. 
Well, we're all sheeted up. So I've got my siding all on. There are a couple spots that may need to be patched up in the future, but for now, this is a decent base. So now before moving ahead with the trim, I'm gonna paint it. That way I can avoid uh, taping and, you know, painting around stuff or whatever. I can just go crazy. And I'm gonna try to paint it using a HVLP gun. H. I don't know if this is gonna work, but I don't have an airless sprayer, so. Worth a shot. Well, that worked terribly. So I ran down to Harbor Freight and I got the cheapest little airless sprayer that they got and it is um, less terrible. Ta-da! So, it's painted. Now, my original plan was to do the trim next. That way I don't got the roof in the way of stuff I'm trying to cut and whatever, I can get it just right. But, it's gonna snow in a couple days. And I wanna be absolutely certain that the roof is done on this thing. So, I guess it's roofing time. This piece of plywood has been sitting in front of an abandoned gas station for months. And just the other day, I was out three in the morning, plowing snow, and in a momentary lapse of judgment, I pulled over and grabbed it. So don't judge me. Uh, what's the statute of limitations on dirty plywood? These are a couple pieces of siding that I found at the dump. And here, it's just a sign from God. That's siding that matches the house. So, at risk of getting in trouble from that guy or that guy, I'm gonna load it up. Cross your fingers. The problem is these are a half inch thick, while this plywood is 5 eighths. So I'm gonna use these on the other side. This whole side will be 5 eighths plywood, that side will be half inch. Easy enough. See if I can get this in a better spot. I wish I could set a tripod on the neighbor's roof. That's like the perfect spot to get a shot of this. That'll do. Well, that's all the large sheet goods that I had laying around. So now I think I'm gonna go buy some. Same with these trusses. We get like three feet of snow here at a time. So the roof has to be strong on this thing. Whoa! Almost lost my saw. So as much as I don't want to have to pay for it, I think it's absolutely worth it for me to buy proper materials to finish this roof. It's only looking like three sheets of plywood or so to finish, so not too bad. But then I'm gonna be purchasing the underlayment, the shingles, all that good stuff, just so I can sleep well at night. So I'll be back with Less money. All this hunting, all this uh, questionably grabbing plywood from behind gas stations, and for what? These are 13 bucks a pop, dude. I'm just gonna buy the rest that I need. Well, this is on sale, so I guess we're going with Oak Ridge Sandcastle. It's beautiful how cheap it is. Well, the roof is all sheeted. Now, before installing our shingles, I need to do the fascia. And for that, I'm gonna use the two by fours from those enormous pallets. Hopefully they're not too ratty. Seems all of these two by fours have a bit of a, um, what do you call that? A boat shape. <laughs> I think that was the dumbest way to describe this shape. So, um, I guess it'll make for some interesting fascia. Guys, so I'm in a bit of a situation here. The last couple days I've had to do things for actual work rather than working on this, so I've barely gotten anything done. And now it's gonna snow tonight and not just some ordinary snow. Five to 11 inches of snow, no problem. But sustained winds of 40 miles per hour with gusts up to 70 miles per hour. This shed's getting stress tested. <laughs> and I gotta make sure I get the roof on this thing before that happens. So, today might be a full time lapse. The entire roofing process might just be a time lapse. So I apologize for that, but gotta get her done. All right, break. Wish me luck. Look, I'm on the roof and she's upset that she can't get to me. 
Stella! Come here, baby. She's like, what are you doing up there? So cute. Well, we're all roofed up. Not sure when the time lapse ended because my SD card became full and I didn't notice, so hopefully we caught most of that. Oh, and you may notice the ridge cap is a different color than the rest. The rest of the shingles were on sale because they had no ridge caps. So, eh, doesn't bother me. It might be a couple days until I keep working on this thing, but it's just one cut for you guys. I don't think there's a way to properly express how sick I am of the snow. Hello, puppy. Look at that, it's like three feet. Ay, ay, ay. Well, we've got a little break in the snow. And by little, I mean one day. Yay. <laughs> but I wanna get this guy done. So, we got one day to trim this. Ain't no time to mess around, let's, let's get her done. Look at her go. She's digging all the way down to land. Hey, little ostrich. Everything in here seems to have stayed dry, despite the tarp being a last defense in one of the windiest storms that I've ever seen. That's good news. Plus, the shingles didn't come off the roof, which is mm, the, exactly what you want shingles to do. So, let's start working on the trim. <laughs> no. Sunlight. We haven't had sun in like a week. Uh, as with all the other parts of this, I'm going to paint everything before installing it to avoid having to cut lines. So all the trim's gonna be white. We're just matching the house, ugly though it may be. The pro tip, if you go for the rustic look, all the little problems are features. All these little abnormalities in the palettes are just part of the aesthetic. Beautiful. All right, one final piece of trim. I got these one by threes from those large pallets as well. And I went ahead and I ripped them on the table saw with a bit of an angle. These are gonna go right here. Like so. So we got a little bit of a drip edge. The last thing we need before this is a functioning structure, doors. I went to the local reclaimed construction materials depot and got these doors. They came with door handles. They're solid core, apparently. And it was 150 bucks for all three. Not bad. Now, they're not quite the right size. So we're about to find out just how solid core they are. So I know some solid core means uh, filled with sawdust. <laughs> we'll see. Go right ahead, chisel out some notches for the hinges. I'm gonna install the hinges for these with some extra long screws to make sure that I'm sinking into something structural here. Now then, I gotta struggle the door on. Give me luck. went on a little easier than I thought it would. Just gotta get this snow out the way. Moment of truth. Cross your fingers. Oh yeah, not bad. This gap can use some work, but that's nothing a little, little hammer can't fix. And I gotta turn the latch around. Let's hope all the doors go this, this easy. So with the double doors, one door will latch into the other door. The other door, I want it to latch into the frame at the top and bottom. Don't worry, I got a plan. So I have a hole drilled on this side and this cable. The cable I can poke through so it's coming out of here. Then we put a spring over it and this part that I made on the lathe, which is literally just a piece of 3 8 round stock with a hole drilled through and a larger hole on the other side. We stick this in, small hole it down, and then, pick a little crimper on the end of the cable and crimp it. 
Hopefully this electrical crimper will work. I'll see why it wouldn't. Ugh. Yeah, that's that's good and crimped. So now the crimped end goes inside the big hole and this whole assembly can go inside the hole in the wood, which seems a bit uh, small. Uh-oh. All that stuff goes back in there. Same. This time it actually fits. So now when this is pulled on, that little metal thing gets brought in. So now we can take the other end of this and stick it inside the kerf of the saw and bring it to the other side. If I made all my measurements correct, this little piece here, which is just another crimping ring that I didn't crimp, I can come and jam inside this part of the doorknob. I'm giving the explanation now because there's no way I could film it. It's toy in there. So, wish me luck. That took forever to jam in there. But we got it in there, got it cut flush, and now when I turn the doorknob, bloop, 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 bloop. Nice. Let's install some doors. Doors! I went ahead and installed these doors on the front, and they seem to work pretty nice. I've got a strike plate on this one. I turn the handle around on this, so they latch. They latch together pretty good. And then our little uh, DIY latch system. For now, it catches behind the trim up here in a little hole I drilled. The bottom catches on nothing, but that's because these close a bit outside of the flooring. Now, I'm not gonna fix that problem until the snow's gone and I can build a ramp out of this thing, but for now, I'm cool with it. Well, that's just about it for this shed. There's just one more totally necessary detail that we need to tackle in this video. Beautiful. Now it's done. That's nice. We did it. This was quite the project. This took way longer than if I just went and bought some two by fours and siding, but it was also much cheaper. So, eh. Win some, lose some, whatever. Either way, I'm super pleased with it. From the outside, this thing looks like a totally acceptable shed. Not too bad for being mostly trash. And then the inside, it looks totally unique and kind of cool. It's that kind of look that you can only get by using trashy wood. Now, I didn't actually end up doing any flooring or anything interior in here, and that's because I don't really know what I'm planning to do with that. The final purpose of this shed. I have an idea for a decently small footprint, but full-size CNC plasma cutter that I want to build, and I'm going to put that in here. So I might end up sheeting the entire thing in steel just to make sure nothing burns down. Why waste flooring if I'm gonna cover it up with something else later anyway? So that'll all happen at once. But yeah, either way, I'm pleased, man. So if you like what you saw here, leave a good old dinger. Think about subscribing and thank you for watching.